Okay, I think it's working now. Okay. Hey guys, today I'm gonna be tier listing the Mario Kart games. So it spans from about 1992 to currently 2017. That was when the last one was made. Eight deluxe. No, no, that's not true. The last one was actually made in 2019. So it spans from 1992 to 2019, with the last one being tour. I'm just going to add another row. This will be D. And then this will be... doesn't count. Okay. Okay, so... We're starting off the list with Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8, uh... I mean, it doesn't look bad. I'd say, like, since 8 Deluxe improved on it a lot, I'd say it's average. It's average game. Uh, the gameplay is nice. But I think, uh, the gameplay improved a lot in the uh, later one. The booster course, okay. This technically counts because it's an add on. Uh, I'm gonna give it an A tier. Because you added, like, uh, Waluigi Pinball, Coconut Mall, a lot of fan favorite courses were added, and they didn't disappoint, so that's what I like about the Booster Course Pass. Also, they added, I'm trying to think, um, they didn't add a Luigi Course, which was disrespectful. They added Yoshi's, no, Yoshi Circuit was already in the game. They added Maple Treeway, they added, uh, Bowser Castle from the SNES. And they added, like, much, much more. They added, actually, 48 additional courses, which is pretty good. Which added more to, like, the thrill factor of the Mario Kart game. Which was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is still is. Hopefully they make a new one in the future, though, because that would be nice. Yeah. And yeah, the booster course pass is good, because you get 48 additional courses. For only $25. It's not bad. And uh, you get to relive some of your nostalgic courses, basically. Like the ones I just mentioned. And more, basically. It's pretty good. And yeah, I like it. It's nice. Mario Kart 64. I played this one recently. It's good, actually. I like it. Yeah. It's pretty fun. It's just the controllers are a little wonky, though. I would say it's a B, though. It's solid. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. It was really fun. Uh, I think this was the first one uh, with the blue shell. I'm pretty sure, yeah, they added the blue shell on this one. Which was a big game changer to the Mario Kart series, to be honest. As you can finally sabotage people even more, which is pretty good. And, uh, what else did they add? They added triple items, I think, in this game, which is pretty good. Or it might have been in the original. I don't think it was in the original, actually. I think this was the first one with it, yeah. They added the Golden Mushroom, which was another cool item they added in Mario Kart 64. My favorite course on this game was the Rainbow Road, but it's also the longest in the series. And the longest Rainbow Road in the series is uh, this one, this Mario Kart. And it's fun, though, because, you know, and I enjoyed the Rainbow Road, actually. Despite it being the longest one in the series, and the longest course in the series, I think. But besides that, it was really fun. The drifting mechanics are hard, because this is an old Mario Kart game, it's from the 90s. But in, in general though, it's still a fun game, I still recommend it. And, uh, yeah. I highly recommend giving that game a try. It's on the Switch now. But, you know, I have to get the online for that. Here we go. Mario Kart 7. Yeah, pretty bad. I'm just gonna be honest. It basically try to copy the wheel lot. And copying doesn't really make it great. It just means it's uncreative and tries to copy from older material too much. I mean, you can copy like little things here and there, but if you copy too much, then it becomes a problem. 
I think this this game tried it so much to be like the Wii, but it failed a lot. But I mean, I did like that they added gliders, though. I'll give them that. But in general, the game's kind of forgettable. A lot of the courses in this game are dead. Like Coconut Mall in this game was not lively at all. It was like very empty. Unlike the Wii, and even Eight the Lux had a better one, in my opinion. He added more life to it, basically. Uh, there was another one, Uhu Island. That one was kind of meh. Yeah. And there was Shy Guy Bazaar, I think, was also in this game. This game also introduced Rosalina's Ice World. Oh yeah, I forgot on Mario Kart 64, they had a Kalamar Desert for the first time. Really fun course, I like that. Really enjoyed it, and it was really entertaining for that game, yeah. The Kalamar Desert in this game sucks, though. It's really dead. Yep. Yeah, it's just really bad. Okay. On to 8 Deluxe. You know what? For it having the uh, more inclusive courses. So it has more like uh, courses basically. And having great gameplay. Great visuals. I'm going to have to give this an S tier. It's a great game. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And that's basically because you get 96 courses if you get the booster. And the gameplay is nice. Uh, the feel of the game is nice. It's it's like the drifting mechanics are good. And, uh, yeah, this is an overall very entertaining game. You got, well, you might, you might argue that this is a copy of the Wii U. Yeah, in certain cases that is true. It is Mario Kart 8, but with, like, extended features, with more courses, basically. And, um... Stuff like that. Whereas Mario Kart 7, well, it tried so much to be like the Wii, but it didn't add anything new that much, except for the glider. I'll give them that. I'll give them the glider, but other than that, it's kind of similar to the Wii. But with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I mean, yeah, it has similar maps to the Wii U, but it has more courses, has improved gameplay, improved drifting mechanics, etc. Yeah. That's why I put Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on S tier. It's great. It's a great game. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really, really good. I recommend it. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. I played this in like college. I'm not gonna lie. It's overrated. I'm gonna give it an average. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it was good for its time, but I think it aged pretty badly. It aged like milk. Compared to like some of the other Mario Kart games on this list. So yeah, it's about average at best, I'd say. It's not that bad. It's not the worst either. They've they're been worse, yeah. I don't really remember much from this game, because I've only played it a bit. But it's basically like a two-player kind of thing, based on what my knowledge on it. It's a two-player game. So one player controls the cart, and then one player controls the direction the cart goes. Whether it's left or right. That's basically the gist of it. It's average for what it is, I'd say. It's not anything spectacular. And it's not anything bad. It's just what it is, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mario Kart DS. Okay. That goes on S tier, obviously. Anyone with good taste would put that on S tier. And it's because you get introduced to Waluigi Pinball, which is an S tier course, Mario Circuit, Shroom Ridge, uh, which are all on 8 Deluxe, by the way, uh, if you get the booster. What else? I'm trying to think. Another big course that I want to mention really badly. That was on the DS, not Chocolate Mountain. That one actually had the worst Chocolate Mountain. It had like literally no obstacles. Mm. What else did Mario Kart DS have? Well, Sky Garden, that game is pretty bad, but on 8 Deluxe, they improved it a lot. Mm. 
trying to remember another DS course. Oh yeah, Cheap Cheap Beach, really nostalgic. Delfino Square. I'm not sure that originated on the DS though. Most likely. Uh, and yeah. Other more classic courses like that too, yeah. Which is why I have it high on the list. Like Neo Mario Credit Deluxe, because it's really nostalgic. I love the game. I still have it, luckily. Uh, uh, it's it's replayable for sure. Yeah. Really fun. This is the first Mario Kart game with the bullet bill in it, which is a big add on to the Mario Kart series, as now you can blast your way to like better placement. And let me mention a lot of these Mario Kart games have only eight racers. That's because some of them are handhelds. Also, like the early ones, is like didn't have it at all. I think the first Mario Kart game to have the twelve player format was Mario Kart Wii. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Mm. So yeah, the bullet bill was introduced in the DS. Like I said, I'm trying to think of anything else that was introduced in the DS. I think that was the biggest addition, though. Yeah. Yeah, I covered it. Okay, this one doesn't count. So we're not going to talk about it. Mario Kart Super Circuit. Uh, this one's very underrated, in my opinion. Yeah. Some people might say it's a bad one. Because it copied too much out of the SNES. Honestly, I think it's underrated because... Um, I like the visuals to the game and the gameplay is pretty fun. We introduced some new maps like Snowland, Sunset Wilds, Cheeseland, Ribbon Road. Which are classics in their own right. So, and yeah, I feel like it deserves a fair placement. I'm gonna put it. Uh, you know, what, I'll just put it at B. I'll put Mario Kart 64 at A. Uh, I think that sounds more fair. Uh, the reason why I have the booster course pass at A instead of S is because you have to pay for it. But other than that, I think the booster course pass is a big win because you get forty-eight additional courses to eight deluxe. It's 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 a good deal. Yeah, it's only twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Pretty sure for forty-eight courses, it's not bad. Uh, what else? This was the last Mario Kart to include the pipe flame cart, which was a staple of the original three Mario Karts, which were Mario Super Mario Kart. Uh, Mario 64, oh no, Mario Kart 64, and, uh, Super, oh no, yeah, Super Circuit, yeah, Mario Kart Super Circuit, those were the original three, so yeah, this one, honestly, I'm going to add another tier, yes, mm. this is going to F, this game sucks. It's mainly because it's a phone game, and phone games, they, they usually half-ass it, so that's probably why it's bad. And, uh, yeah, the visuals for the game suck, the gameplay sucks, most of the maps aged like milk. 8 Deluxe improved tremendously on the maps. I mean, you can look at it for yourself, like, you can see the improvement, the attention to detail, and the gameplay, and it's way better than Tor, I'll tell you that. So, yeah. Uh, that's why I have Torah F. Mario Kart 7, they keep that D for now. It's a bad game, but I think Torah's worse. So yeah. Mario Kart Wii. S tier. And the reason why I put Mario Kart Wii at S tier, obviously, it's nostalgic. Uh, we introduced to Coconut Mall for the first time. This was the first Mario Kart game to have stunt tricks, which was awesome. You finally get to do stunts in the air, which you couldn't do in the older games. Which is a big improvement, so yeah. Uh, Maple Tree Way. I'm trying to think of another course that's nostalgic for the Wii. Wii Rainbow Road, which was really fun. I love that Rainbow Road, even though I kept falling off on that one a lot. Yeah. It's a great game. 10 out of 10. Love it. Uh, definitely replayable. I would replay it, personally. And yeah, it's, it's a classic. For its own right, you know. I think it made the way for, like, a lot of, um, 
new courses to be added onto 8 Deluxe. So, yeah, I have to give it credit for that as well. Well, we also have to give Tor credit that, that you know, they started the whole, like, Deluxe courses thing, so. Or was it, I think it was the Wii U. We'll have to give that credit as well. But I think 8 Deluxe improved tremendously on the courses, so yeah. They look better, and, like, the gameplay to it feels better, too. So, yeah. Super Mario Kart. The first one in the series. You know, for it being a pioneer to the series, uh, it would be disrespectful for it to go below S. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some people might say, oh, why is it an S tier? And it's mainly because without this game, there wouldn't be, you know, Mario Kart 64, Mario Kart Super Circuit, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart Wii, and the list goes on. Like, this is the game that started it all. And also, it had, like, the um, Rainbow Road, which was really good. That was my favorite one, actually, the one on the SNES. That one's a classic. Definitely replayable. The drifting mechanics are pretty bad, but it's 1992. Put them some slack. You know? Uh, it's still a great game. I would, I would still replay it, you know? The difficulty of the early Mario Kart games all meant they're pretty hard. You know? They have a strategy called rubber banding, where if, you know, you pass a player, they go unusually fast and start passing. So yeah, you gotta be aware of that with the old Mario Kart games. But yeah, other than that, like, my favorite one on here was probably the S SNES Rainbow Road. That was my favorite one in this game. There was also Choco Island, Bowser Castle is 1 of 3, Donut Plains 1 of 3, I'm trying to think. Um... And the list goes on. Mario Circuit 3, and 2 and 1, of course, yeah. It's really fun. I actually enjoy this one. This is way better than the GBA one, in my opinion, because it had better visuals and better gameplay. More fluid gameplay. I'll admit, though, the GBA one had better items, but that's because it's, it was made later on, when the series was starting to establish itself better. But, I mean, it's, I would still replay Super Mario Kart, it's a classic. Yeah, it's basically a uh, classic for, you know, many generations to come. You yeah. know? Yeah. That is my list on the Mario Kart 2 list. I was originally going to do, like, a ranking of them from worst to best. Do a video on that, but I just decided to do a tier list because it's more fun. So, from S tier, we got... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart Wii, Super Mario Kart. 8 tier we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, which is basically an add-on. You know, adds 48 more courses, and now the game has 96 courses. So yeah. <clears throat> Mario Kart 64 added the, like I said, the Golden Mushroom and the Blue Shell, and the Triple Items, which are pretty good add-ons. And it had, on top of that, a really good Rainbow Road, which was the longest uh, level in Mario Kart history, actually. Or, of course, in Mario Kart history, yeah. B, we have Mario Kart Super Circuit, really underrated. <coughs> Deserves more praise. You know? You know, it's just a really good game. I enjoyed, like, the, um, the maps Ribbon Road, Snowland... What else? <clears throat> Cheese Land, Sunset Wilds, those were great maps. And, you know, it was just a really fun game. C tier, I mean, we have Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and that's because it has less add-ons than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The gameplay, well, it aged decently. Other than that, it didn't age bad at all, actually. It still looks decent. I'd say it's just average. Based on, like, the gameplay I saw. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. This is probably the most overrated one in the series, in my opinion. You know. It's not much to it. You know. I put Mario Kart 8 Wii U over it, personally. Based on what I saw. Mario Kart 8 Wii U has better gameplay, in my opinion. But this one is not that bad. I mean, 
it's not terrible, it's just a decent game, at best, in my opinion. D tier, which is where it starts getting bad, Mario Kart 7, really bad, tried copying too much from the Wii, didn't have any cool add-ons except for the glider, and, uh, the gameplay wasn't that good, let's be honest. The DS had way better gameplay, you know. And the DS came out like almost, well, basically half a decade before it, so yeah. <sighs> I did like Rock Rock Mountain, Piranha Plant Slide, those were good add-ons, as well as the glider, but... Other than that, the gameplay is not really that fluid, it feels all over the place. But, yeah. I mean, you can say the same thing about the earlier games, but the earlier games have, like, an appeal to it. Well, Marker said I'll give them credit as well. They did add the Fire Flower, which was a pretty game-changing item. Oh yeah, Marker added the Piranha Plant power-up, pretty sure. Super Circuit, I don't know if they added anything new there. Marker we added the 12-player format, which was pretty cool. Uh, Super Mario Kart just had like the original items basically, like Starman, uh, Red Shell, Green Shell, Banana, I'm trying to think of another original item, Ghost, those are like the OG items basically, Lightning, you know, those are like the original items. Yeah. Did I mention Starman? If I didn't, yeah, Starman was out of there in here. Uh, Mario Kart 7. It was the first Mario Kart to also have small wheels. As in the older ones, you only had standard wheels. Apparently, yeah. Okay, F tier we have Mario Kart Tour, and that's because the gameplay and the visuals to the gameplay look really bad. Uninnovative, and yeah, it basically lacks, you know, what makes a Mario Kart game a Mario Kart game. So yeah, that too. And also, like, it's not much. There's not much in this game. I mean, yeah, it added, like, this, the cities and stuff, but other than that, it's not really that eventful. The gameplay... And the look of the game are pretty bad, in my opinion. I played this in 2019. It was... I only played it one day. And I forgot about it. That's how bad it is. But is it replayable, in my opinion? No. Mario Kart 7, maybe. Just for the glider being added. But it's still a bad game. Both of them. So, yeah. And then this one is doesn't count. And there's a reason why it doesn't count. Because... Yeah, it's basically the same as Mario Kart Deluxe. Instead, it's like virtual reality crap. Yeah, we don't count that. It has to be part of the Mario Kart series. Or be, like, you know, significant to it as well. So, yeah. This is my list. Let me know what you think. Anyways, uh... Peace.